Hello everyone and welcome to episode 5 of Witch Switch. In this episode, I'll be going over the 4 basic kale switches, which are the kale brown, blue, red, and black switches. I'd like to give a special thanks to Novel Keys for providing these switches, and Input Club, who have a great amount of force curve graphs available on their site. These switches are all manufactured by Kiowa in China, and all these switches feature a clear top and white bottoms. The switches accommodate SMG RGBs as well as normal in switch LEDs. The Kale Brown switch is a simple tactile switch in their line you may find in many OEM keyboards. Very similar to the Cherry MX Brown, both in appearance and feel. Looking at the force curve graph, we have a tactile bump around 1mm into the press, reaching 60g force. The actuation is at 2mm and approximately 50g force, while the bottom out is at 65 these numbers seem impressive compared to a cherry brown, but are slightly deceptive if we compare them to the numbers Hotatech independently on his force curve graph machine. It reads the tactile bump even sooner at approximately half a millimeter and at only 50 grams force. The actuation on the other hand is a bit lower and closer at approximately 40 gram force. The bottom out is still consistent at 65 grams force. The bump is small, round, and doesn't feel significantly substantial. At least it feels existent to some degree. Many of you may know I don't care for brown switches, whether they're B-Sun, Cherry, Gatoron, Kale, and others. So these switches feel pretty plain Jane to me with nothing spectacular about them. The Kale Blue switch is a basic clicky switch in this lineup. Unlike their new click bar designs that utilize a click bar, these utilize the old fashioned click jacket that goes around the stem. Similar to the Kale Brown, the tactile bump is rated at 60 grams force, with the actuation at 50. The bottom out force, though, is rated at 70 grams force. Unlike the Kale Brown, the bump is rated between 1 and 2 millimeters, which do match up with Hot Dog's force curve graph. What doesn't match up is the bottom out force, which is a little bit lower at around 65 grams. Like the Brown switches before, and the switches after this one, Kale has been producing some smooth switches. The downside to this switch, though, is the click jacket, and it's only an issue because the click bar exists. If you're listening closely, a click jacket will always sound like a rattly stab on the inside as you press it. And once you start to notice that, it may ruin click jackets for you. Now we move on to the two linear switches in this lineup, the Kale Red and Black switches, which are Kale's response to Cherry and Gatoron's similar offerings. These switches are pretty smooth. Let's start with the lighter red switch. The Kale Red is rated to actuate at 50 gram force after two millimeters of travel, and the final bottom out is at around 65 to 70 grams. Hata's force curve graph matches that, so it's a good point on kale for accuracy. It's a nice light linear switch that's relatively smooth, a bit too light for my preference, but it's a good start for many people who want a very light linear switch. The kale blacks are, to me, a more favorable weight than the kale reds. Unfortunately, Hata did not make a force curve graph of the Kale Black switches, so all I have to go on is the manufacturer's force diagram. But I think it's safe to assume that Hata's force curve graph would most likely look similar to the red switch, but matching with the correct weight. The Kale Black actuates at 60 grams force, 2 millimeters into the press, and bottoms out at 80 grams force. The switch is smooth, and the typing experience is very nice. This is probably your best option of the four switches this episode. Throw some lube on the switch and it'll be ready for almost any kind of board you want to throw it in. If I had to rank these switches, I'd rank them with the Kale Blacks in first and with the other three tying for last. Kale's done a pretty good job with these stock switches, but honestly, I'd consider the box switches over these any day unless you're adamant about spring swapping. That's all for this episode. Thank you for watching.